Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I think everybody has pretty much found the place where to sit. Sit for our, our seminar. I'm very glad to see so many faces. Crowded house is a good house, at least when it's, there's something good to offer to you, and I'm sure that we do. But before we go to that, I invite uh, Ernst Stetter to open our seminar. He is the General Secretary of um, Foundation for European Progressive Studies, and Kalvi Sorsa Foundation has arranged many, many good seminars together with them, and, uh, and uh, this is one good example of that. Please, Mr. Stetter. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you also for inviting me and, and be part of this uh, today exercise and this day event. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here in Helsinki and it's also a pleasure for this cooperation we have as uh, FEPS Foundation, as Foundation for European Progressive Studies started already a couple of years ago when we are doing on a yearly basis this kind of economic uh, seminars and uh, I think this is, uh, there is a need for because uh, as FEPS, as a progressive European think tank, we are committed to develop alternatives in economic thinking and in, in economic theory. And we are also uh, committed to develop together with think tanks, with progressive think tanks in Europe and, um, and, and elsewhere, possibilities which are not based only on a purely monetaristic approach. FEPS is convinced that it's highly time, highly time to rethink European policies towards the crisis. Four years after the start of the financial crisis, we remain still in a not acceptable situation. <laughs> GDP and GDP per capita are still below the pre-crisis level. Unemployment remains at historical high level. In September 2012, in the Eurozone, the rate was about 11.6% of labor force. Even more, Youth unemployment <coughs> increased dramatically this year, and we had in September 17.7% of the 15 to 29-year-old people unemployed. This is an unacceptable situation, I think. The risk is very high that this will last and we will face a long-term high level of structural unemployment, which is affecting for sure growth and public finances. The consequences are clear. Increased poverty with all the consequences of a deep social crisis. This week, um, FAPS Foundation, together with the S&D Group in the European Parliament, has uh, published an independent annual alternative growth survey. It's available outside. It's available also on, online. Uh, and this was elaborated together with three macroeconomic research institute in Europe with the French one, with the German one, and with the Danish one. The Danish one is the ECLM, the uh, um, research, um, macroeconomic research institute of SAMAC. The remarks and the proposals are focusing on, on the underlying causes of the crisis rather than focusing on consolidating public deficits. The Eurozone, and this goes also is one of the, of the results of this, of this growth survey, is suffering from an institutional wrong setting right from the beginning. And therefore, the zone suffers from a balance of payment crisis due to the buildup of current account imbalances between its members. So here we are at the topic of our deliberations today, the question of the institutional setup of a monetary union. Secondly, it is also a question of a real adjustment of nominal wages and prices in a balanced way. Here we are again at the topic of our seminar today, modern money and functional finance towards full employment. For sure, we should be aware that fiscal consolidation and seriousness is needed and vital. But we have also to be clear on the European level, it is high time to develop real and concrete alternatives if we are not risk failing and we risk to blow up the whole European integration process. The latest developments in Europe with a disastrous discussion on the budget, the growing tendencies to blame those who are in difficulties and the desolidarity movements are frightening. 
Europe is at the eve of an important electoral year next year in 2013-2014. We will face elections in two founding member countries of, of the European Union, in Italy in spring and in Germany in September. We will have then to need also to prepare very thoroughly the next European elections in 2014. The challenges we face are profound and it's not simply a question we think also at the FEPS Foundation to win the elections. It's a question also to win for the real, to win in a sense to present real alternatives to the citizens in the frame of a truly social contract which encompasses the values of us, the progressives, and develops real alternatives for the social democracy of the after crisis. The Europe, in a sense, needs and this will be my, my closing, needs to strengthen its global position and therefore needs investments. Europe needs also to go further with its developments towards an op operative knowledge-based economy and therefore needs investments. Europe needs to fight, as I already said at the beginning, effectively against youth unemployment and therefore needs investment. All these needs allocating needs to allocate money, needs to enhance investments, and needs also to not only cutting and not doing only austerity policies. For sure, there are alternatives, and we can also think on rethinking some of the basics of the European Union, which means the uh, common agricultural policy, which means also the structural and cohesion funds, which means also the huge projects we are always doing when thinking of stimulating growth in just building up infrastructure projects. They are needed, but perhaps there are also, also other alternatives. These are some of my reflections coming from Brussels, and I do hope that we will have a, a very, very good afternoon today and talking on employment policy in the European Union. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ernst. I really appreciate that you could come and join us for this, this seminar. Uh, I'd just like to mention that um, Sorsa Foundation has, uh, uh, only three weeks ago, we had our, our traditional policy and research day arranged uh, together with FEPS, and, and uh, we had a very, very good whole day seminar on, on a topic, religion in politics and religion and politics. It was an of a successful uh, event on currently important issues. And I think uh, one of the main tasks of our think tank is to bring European international debates and views to Finland. And in this, this network of think tanks that FEPS is connecting is very, very valuable for us. And I do look forward for a continu continued good, um, good cooperation. I also like to thank uh, Finnish, uh, the Federation of Finnish Trade Unions (SAK), uh, who is supporting, uh, has been supporting arrangements and, 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 and uh, to make possible this conference today. Uh, amidst all the troubles and crises in present Europe and world, it sounds like a bold claim to place the return of full employment policy on the agenda. One can say that. But there is no denying that it is the most important task to tackle at the moment. It may be that it sounds already somewhat, it, it is somewhat a cliche to state that the current financial and economic crises are turning into political and social crises as well. Uh, and they may ultimately, ultimately, ultimately shake the foundations of our societies. In the long perspective of history, one is entitled to ask what level of unemployment we are willing to tolerate. With Great Depression of the 1930s and its consequences in mind, full, in, full employment was always high on the pro priority list after the World War II, not least because uh, unemployment was feared to play politically into communist hands in the bipolar Cold War world. 
what, thus what is tolerable that depends on historical situation as well as perspective. In Finland we have a classic example of this. In 1975 an emergency government was formed when Finland had roughly 50,000 people unemployed. 50,000. I do not know whether we have enjoyed that low figures ever after that. But I do know that any prime minister, any government, or minister of labor now would be delighted in such figures that in the 70s was a cause for emergency government. <laughs> In tackling unemployment, Sweden used to be the model country for Finland. For example, in the painful depression of the early 1990s, the Swedes seemed to emphasize jobs and employment while the Finns suffered through austerity programs in order to balance the state finances. To my understanding, Swedish unemployment levels have in recent years been at pretty much the same level as in Finland. And it will be interesting to learn how these developments are regarded in Sweden. I'm, I'm very glad, glad that Lena Sommerstad is joining our speakers and Finnish experts in the panel discussion later today. But before that, it is time to give the floor to our speakers who dare to set the question of full employment on the agenda. Maybe it's telling that they both come from the United States and the international comparative perspective is already in the title of the first presentation. Professor James Galbraith is asking why, in spite of reactionary economic ideas, the United States still survived the great financial crisis and Europe did not. Professor Galbraith's academic base is at the University of Austin, Texas, but he has also worked widely as an advisor to several administra administrations around the world. Professor Galbraith is also leading Texas Global Inequality Project, and he discusses the link between inequality and instability, for, for example, in his latest book that was published earlier this year. Professor Galbraith, the floor is yours. <laughs> 